Hi everybody, welcome to my home site and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. So as you know, anytime that President Holland talks these days, I am all ears because it seems like he may not be with us for much longer. I, I don't know. In this last general conference, he said that uh, he returned to life. It seemed like he was miraculous and that he has more to do. But he said that he only has weeks or maybe months left. Well, uh, we're getting pretty close to the October uh, general conference for 2024, and he's still here. So uh, there's this that, that, that just came out. Uh, this is published on August 30th, so just a couple days ago. Episode 204, President Jeffrey R. Holland on the Gospel of Jesus Christ and Life's Challenges with guest host, Sister Sherry Dew. <laughs> Sherry Dew is one of my favorites. She's from Kansas. Um, okay, so there were a couple things in here that caught my eye that I want to share with you. Okay, Sherry Dew. You've been out among the saints a fair amount in the last year since you became president of the Twelve and often in multi-stake leadership meetings or priesthood leadership meetings and so forth. Curious to know, when you're out with the people and you're hearing their questions and answering their questions, so what gives you the greatest hope for the future? Meaning the church in the future and concerns for the church in the future, either one, either or both of, the, of those. President Jeffrey R. Holland, I have the same answer for both. The future of the church and the delight of the church, the hope of the church, is its young people. And my greatest concern, my greatest worry, and the thing that keeps me awake at night is our young people. So that is the next generation, as it were, in the church. And that is constantly turning, <clears throat> and that is a constantly turning over generation. But I love them dearly. I chose a profession. I might have done some other things, but I chose to teach young people. And I've been with them for, I don't know, 60 years or 70 or something. So I love them and I think about them. I want them to grow up in the gospel. I want them to go to the temple. Now, this is important right here because I think this is part of uh, what keeps them up at night. He talks about it a little bit more as we continue. I want them to go on missions as they choose. I want them to marry in the temple. All in due time and all as they are inspired to do. But I want for them what you want for them, and what their parents want for them, what President Nelson wants for them. And so, when they're doing that, I'm ecstatic. I'm thrilled beyond expression. When they're not doing that, or too troubled, then I worry and lie awake a little, and my stomach churns. So, we are all kind of the same on that. But I would say here, when we, ha when we have to create 36 missions in one year just to accommodate the missionaries who want to go, don't tell me that young people are not serving and loving and growing into the beauty of the gospel. Now, let me pause right here. We've talked about this before, and we've talked about the missionary surge. We're going to review some of those numbers in just a minute. But I, I just want to impress upon you that I think this is a really big deal. I think this whole thing with the Lord's Youth Battalion, I, I don't think it's just like a motivational thing or just like a fun way to think of the youth of the, in the church, but that it has no meaning. I really think it has quite a bit of meaning. I've done many, I've done many videos about the rising generation. Uh, I have a spreadsheet uh, called Quotes, Rising Generation. It's in timeline order. Uh, you should go and take a look at that. The, the link for my spreadsheets is in the description box of each video. But uh, we're going to look at something similar in just a minute when it comes to missionaries and the rising generation. Okay, but look, creating 36 missions in one year just to accommodate the number of missionaries that want to go. Okay, but there's more. Uh, and this is exciting. Okay, go to the temple and see if you can get a turn at the baptismal font. The waiting list is out onto the street. My granddaughter would go to the temple to try to get two names, maybe three, on a good day, three, but on a regular day, two. Do two baptisms from the dead and then go to high school. And how many thousands are doing that? 
And we have got to stress more, we have got to say more about going to the temple. Let me pause there. You guys, I do believe it's because that's how you get on the ark. It's it's being on the covenant path, starting with baptism. So if that's where you're at, then you're on the ark. But if it's time for you to go to the temple, we should go to the temple and progress on the covenant path and keep our covenants. But uh, Sister Nelson, in uh, October of 2022, after General Conference, there was the special area devotional. In, um, it was for Alberta and British Columbia, Canada. And uh, she put up that quote on the screen from her friends where they're like, President Nelson, that general conference was the best. We feel like you've asked us to get on the ark. And that is how you get on the ark. You you live inside your covenants and you stay on the covenant path. So it's kind of a big deal um, at all times, but especially as we approach the second coming. Okay, continuing. We have often said, uh, where are you going on your mission? You know, and where would you like to go on your mission? And where'd your dad go or mother on a mission? And that is all fine for interest, but that's after an endowment. That is after going to the temple. We cannot let the temple experience be an add-on, a kind of, oh yes, I forgot, in touch base, in touch base is the temple before you go off on your mission. Well, they are different. A mission is different than an endowment experience. And we've got a traditional, or sorry, we've got a tradition of looking forward to missions. I am the chief advocate for that, but we've all got to teach better and sooner the wonder of the temple before a mission. Uh, that, that that is how you prepare, not only for a mission, but for life. <clears throat> life is unfolding after the temple. And one of those things is a mission, and then marriage, and then growing up. So, young people, I think they are magnificent, and we are in an absolutely magnificent period now. Now, let me just pause right there. Uh, remember, the saints, before they crossed the plains, they got their endowments in the Navu Temple. That was like a preparation for them for that period of their lives, a very difficult trek. Okay. Um, and it's the same thing with going on a mission. And then, like he said, just doing life in general. So it's no small thing. It really isn't. Um, it protects you spiritually and temporally in some cases. Okay. But this last part is where, uh, for me, this just kind of goes off the rails. The demographics of the country, of the U.S., and for the most part of the world, is declining. So we have a smaller pool to draw from, broadly speaking. But for us, in the church, and not just missions and not just temples, but virtually everything we are doing in the church is increasing. So that is exciting to me everything is increasing. And uh, that's true. Now, of course, the biggest, exa the biggest, biggest examples are uh, the temples that are being announced and built, um, as well as uh, the number of missionaries. I, I don't know about everything else because I don't have access to the church statistics and analytics and things like that. So if you have any ideas of how else the church is increasing, then put it in the the comments below. I don't know, like, is activity increasing? Uh, is, I, I don't know. I take him, I take him at his word, but I think that's very exciting. When he says that the demographics are decreasing, I don't know exactly what he means by that. Uh, if he's talking about like population growth or the, uh, like the fertility rate, I know that that's on the decline, but you also have you also have this like this concept or not well this thing that we're seeing with other churches um specifically like christian churches that seem to be disintegrating in fact before i even found this today i just like looked on the you know i checked i i check a number of different websites when i'm looking for news and this is one of them the church news but before i came across this i saw this 
this morning. Uh, this is from USA Today. As millions leave organized religion, spiritual and secular communities offer refuge. Now, I just want to le- read a little bit about th- from this before we go back to President Holland. He could be referring to this as well. Okay, so Brad Ruggles had already begun wrestling with his evangelical faith when he was called to launch a small church in a North Indianapolis suburb. As he pastored, okay, so this guy is supposedly like a shepherd um, for Christ. As he pastored over his 200-member congregation, he found himself struggling with members' resistance to issues of LGBTQ inclusion or questions raised by the murder of George Floyd. Okay, so that's an event from 2020. So I guess you could say, I, I don't know his personal history, but the year 2020 may have uh, been the straw uh, to break the camel's back for him. I don't know. Seems like it was a transfor- transformational year for a lot of people. Eventually, in 2021, he stepped down <clears throat> and away from his faith, but ultimately craved the brotherhood. I have that highlighted because you guys, it's become more and more apparent to me as I've grown older. I think some people go to church um, simply for that, just because they want to be part of a community, which is which is fine. Uh, it can be worse than that, aside from just having a healthy desire to be with other people and feel like you're included. Beyond that, there are some people that you know gravitate toward communities because they are predators meaning that they're going there for attention. Maybe that community offers some kind of like benefit. It could be like an economic benefit. <clears throat> could help you with like finding a job. So there's people that go to church for various reasons. And not everybody not everybody goes to church because of what they believe. That's, that's just the truth. And that's, you know, wheat and tares. People that are true, they're going there because they think they should go there. That's truly what they believe. But then people that go there for whatever other reason that there may be. So I'm just saying, you know, he's craving brotherhood. Okay, continuing. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not judging him, by the way. I'm just pointing that out. Even if it's not true of him, it could be true of others. They're just going to church <clears throat> for a sense of belonging. Um but ultimately craved the brotherhood he'd enjoyed as part of a congregation. Then he found C3, an inclusive Sunday collective in West Michigan that had undergone its own transformation and now describes itself not as a church, but a home for the spiritually homeless dedicated to pondering existential questions and living out shared values. So that's a little... That's a little freaky. Uh, going from a church to like a this like non-church, like imitation church, essentially. Um, Ruggles said, this place is such a unicorn. Now, uh, leading a leading teacher at C3, <clears throat> whose name is a nod to its previous existence as Christ Community Church. So isn't that interesting? President Nelson has been stressing the correct name of the church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he said that the problem with nicknames like Mormon or LDS or the Latter-day Saint Church or things like that is that it takes out the most important part. It takes out Christ's name. And here you have an example of what used to be a church and part of its name included the name of Christ. And now it's been reduced to a letter and a number. <laughs> now it's just a, a like a nut. It's a unicorn, like he said. Okay. Quote, these are some of the most open-minded people I've ever met. Communities like C3 show how, despite Americans' <clears throat> ongoing abandonment of traditional organized religion, Many longing to maintain some sense of spirituality and community in their lives are finding, are finding it in places for both religious and non-religious. Okay, later on, 
The exodus from mainstream religious paths has taken place over the last several decades. In the early 1990s, 9 in 10 Americans, 90%, identified as Christian. By last year, that figure had dropped to 63%. More recently, the shift has been driven by young women reversing patterns of generations past. The decline has occurred largely among Protestants, 60% of whom are evangelicals, Meanwhile, the portion of Americans describing themselves as agnostic, atheist, or nothing in particular, the so-called nuns, have risen to 3 in 10, or nearly 3 in 10. Uh, here's the guy right here. This is Ruggles. Um, there was a part here. Oh, yeah. I thought this was interesting. <clears throat> C3, a non-religious collective in West Michigan. You guys, I don't like that idea. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't want non-religious collectives, or in, in other words, like pseudo-churches. He was, he was a shepherd of Christ, a pastor. And now he's part of a non-religious collective called C3. They used to be, what was it, Christ Community Church or something like that. Okay, later on, just one last thing before we go back to President Holland. Uh, some, seeking, or some seek religion-free community. Others look, to, others look to shed religion altogether, but still hope to find a community to help, them to help them navigate life's challenges. Quote, People do indeed still need places to gather, and their communities need them to have places where volunteer energy gets mobilized and inspired said Nancy Ammerman, a professor emerita of religious sociology at Boston University. And then she continues, there's no particular reason that spiritual non-religious practices should prevent them from doing so. This is probably, this is probably going to be like a thing over the next few years or probably in the lead up to the second coming, you're going to start having these like non churches, these imitation secular churches they're like mimicking church um what is this founder danny prada addresses members of the heartway church in davie florida the former southern baptist convention church now describes itself as a contemplative community centered on love and has become a home for those leaving traditional organized religion so these are like, I think another way you can think about this is like, they're like zombie churches. Isn't that really what's going on? You had something that was alive. It was a church. It didn't have the full truth, but now it's become just like this shell of what it used to be and an imitation. Okay, continuing. Some gravitate to groups like Sunday Assembly USA, a London-based secular network. So instead of calling it a church, a secular network with branches in 13 American cities. The life-celebrating movement initially rode atheism's growing waves, but welcomes a wide range of beliefs, uh, said Ross Llew Llewellyn? Llewellyn of Sunday Assembly Atlanta. So uh, that may be a part of what uh, President Holland is talking about. Let's just read this again with that in mind. The, demogra the demographics of the country of the U.S. and for the most part of the world is declining. And so I just think of Christianity disintegrating. So we have a, a smaller pool to draw from, broadly speaking. But for us in the church, and not just missions and not just temples, but virtually everything we are doing in the church is increasing. So that is, I don't know, to my little narrow head that seems like a kind of a double win we're going <clears throat> we're going against okay and when he says like drawing from a pool i'm not i don't know what i don't know if he's talking about like drawing from like a pool of potential converts or what he's referring to exactly but he says we are going against a smaller pool and we're getting more success from that wonderful wonderful community of young latter day saints it is magnificent. I could go on all night about this, but I should not. So I tend to think that 
he's thinking about major growth for the church. He says virtually everything we are doing in the church is increasing. And it makes me think about this YouTube video by KSL. President Holland rededicates historic St. George, Utah Temple. And uh, they're interviewing him here. And I took down a quote and put it on my spreadsheet called Quotes, Second Coming. Okay. And this is at about the two-minute mark, if you want to watch it. I'll put a link for the video in the description box below. But he says, these temples are being built for very large numbers of people to be having their temple experiences and making those covenants and changing the history of the world. So I, I think that he I think that he has this on the mind. Um, large numbers of people coming into the church and going to the temples of the church. And uh, I guess to finish this off, it also makes me think of what President Nelson said. This is a social media post on November 1st, 2018. And he says, This is a global ministry. We are prophets for the whole world, to all of our, to all of our God's children, not just members of the church. So on this tour... We talk to people in five different countries. If there are 200 or more countries in this world, five is such a small drop in the bucket. We'll get around, but we'll still miss more than we'll touch. But we'll try. We won't give up just because it's a big job. We're just at the exponential phase of growth. And there's more that I can show you, but I've already covered it, you know, a number of different times. It really seems like the church is expecting large growth. And I feel like this is uh, the latest evidence of that uh, as he's doing this podcast with, um, or he's being interviewed in this podcast by Sherry Dew. So it's really exciting stuff, but uh, that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.